Hello, my name is Dennis, and welcome to my Trailer Park White Trash Mobile Home Kitchen. I really do live in a mobile home, in a trailer park, and this is my kitchen. For this video today, I'm going to be continuing my exploration of sauces, Italian sauces to be more specific. I've already made a marinara, but I have a lot of that right here. And that recipe is on the website. There's also a link to the YouTube video on making homemade marinara. What I want to concentrate on today are two different kinds of ragu. Now, when I talk about ragu, I don't mean ragu, that jarred spaghetti sauce they sell in the grocery stores. I'm talking about real Italian ragu. Ragu is a chunky sauce, a chunky pasta sauce. You can use meat, you can use vegetables, you can use both. There was an Italian family near where I grew up in New England and they would make very often a vegetable ragu. You can use meat. My mom made meat ragu. When I was in school and we had pasta with spaghetti, I mean spaghetti with pasta sauce, there was always ground meat in it. It was macaroni and ragu. So that's what I'm going to make today. I'm going to show you some tricks on how I make my ground beef, my beef ragu, like my mom made, because it took me a long time to figure out how she made it. I couldn't get the flavor just right. So I'm going to show you how I do that. And then I'm also going to make Italian sausage ragu. I'm going to show you how I make that. So let me get into the ingredients that I use for making my ragu. So here are my ingredients for my ragu. This is homemade spaghetti sauce, my marinara sauce. Again, this recipe is on the website. I have a lot here because I'm going to divide this up into two different sauces. I have a dozen Italian sausages here, each weigh about four ounces. I'm going to be using the meat from four of these to make an Italian sausage ragu, but in the sauce, or half the sauce, I'm going to be cooking the other eight Italian sausages because they'll, as they cook, they'll help to flavor the sauce. And then I have one pound of ground beef here. I'm going to use half the sauce with the ground beef to make a beef ragu, and that's why I have an onion and a nutmeg. When I first tried to learn how to make beef ragu, I could not get it to taste as good as my mom's. And after a while, I realized it was because she had been caramelizing her onions. I was using just cooked, translucent, tender cooked onion. Once I learned to, ca to caramelize my onion, then I got that really good beef ragu flavor that I wanted. And I like to use fresh ground nutmeg. That's what this is. It's a nutmeg with a nutmeg grater. I like to use fresh ground nutmeg in my beef ragu. So those are the ingredients. Let's get into how I'm going to be preparing the meats. Before I do my beef, I have to caramelize my onion, as I said. So get this split up in half and that makes it easier to peel this skin off like so and then I'll chop those yeah, it's got some mold under the skin I'm going to rinse this off just to get rid of some of that mold from the skin Okay, because I'm going to be really cooking this down a lot, I'm really not all that concerned about how fine these are chopped up. I obviously, obviously don't want really big pieces. So I'm just going to kind of do this into a fairly large dice. There's different ways of dicing onions. This is the way that works best for me. It's not the way that professional chefs do it, but it works for me. I just cut slices across the diameter of half the onion. And then using the rings to help me to break it up, I just cut through it. And there is my chopped onion. That's it. 
I'm starting my onions cooking here in about maybe two tablespoons of olive oil. And although this is at high heat right now, in a little bit I'm going to turn this down to about medium high, medium, and then continue to cook. The whole purpose in caramelizing onions, if you're not familiar with the process, is it'll enhance and concentrate the sugars that are in the onions and it just changes the flavor so much and it's such an improvement in the flavor it really adds to the ragu so just putting in cooked light cut lightly cooked onions um, soft cooked whatever tender translucent onions however you want to call it it doesn't really add the flavor to the sauce the way caramelized onions will so see how these look when we come back these have been cooking for exactly 30 minutes. Notice the change in the color. Also notice the change in the volume. That's because all the water has been cooked out. I'm running it, I'm cooking it now in a very low heat, the lowest heat setting. You can brown onions quickly by cooking them at a very high heat and just turning them a lot until they're brown on the outside. But unless you get the water out and heat them through hot enough, they're not going to caramelize. These aren't browned onions, these are caramelized onions. So the sugar has really be built up in these and this is going to add an entirely different flavor to my ragu compared to using just regularly cooked translucent tender onion. So that's the onion. My next step now is to cook my two different kinds of meat. I've removed my onions from the pan and I brought the heat back up again. So now I'm going to start doing my ground beef. There's no need to cook this till it's really browned. I'm just going to cook this until it's cooked through. It's pretty much going to disappear into the sauce sort of so the sauce is going to color it. And then I got my nutmeg grater and some nutmeg here. Just going to grate, I don't know, maybe an eighth of a teaspoon of nutmeg in here. I like that flavor with ground beef. It just seems to work well in this sauce. All right, so when this is cooked, I'll start doing the Italian sausage next. All right, as you can see, this is cooked now. This really took only five minutes to cook. What I'm seeing in here is a lot of fat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tilt this and set it on its side and let some of this fat drain out. And then I'll take that off. I don't want a lot of beef fat in my ragu. And then I'll be ready to combine everything to finish this beef ragu. I've returned my beef to this pan after I drained the oil, the oil off the fat and gave it just a quick wipe with a paper towel. There's my caramelized onions back in there. I'm not adding any garlic or herbs or anything because that's already in the sauce. What I do want to do at this point is just start scooping in some of my sauce here. Maybe a couple of good scoops here. And then stir that in. And that's it. That is a nice chunky beef ragu. That look nice. That looks so delicious. In this next step, I'm going to actually flavor my sauce. I'm not going to use these Italian sausages as part of the ragu. I cooked sausage meat for that. I'm going to cook the sausages in the sauce. They will yield some of their flavor. I don't know whether you can tell or not, but I've pierced these sausages several times on both sides or on different sides. And they'll give this sauce more of an Italian sausage flavor. I'm actually using more than half of my sauce here for this because I know I need a lot of sauce to cover these sausages. And then I'm just going to, as soon as this comes up to a heat where it's starting to 
boil. I'm going to put a cover on this. As I do in my other videos, I'll take one of these grates off one of these hobs and I'll move it underneath this one so I have two stacked. And then I'll reduce the heat to low and just simmer this for about an hour, hour and a half to really get these sausages cooked and to get them to rend their flavor. The sausages can be set aside after they're cooked and served with other meals. You can even include them if you want when you serve a macaroni dish with Italian sausage ragu and put one or two sausages on the side of the plate for some extra meat. Okay, my sauce has been simmering here for 90 minutes. I turn my heat off. I actually decided while this was simmering that I'm going to do a third thing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the Italian sausages out, which I was of course planning to do anyway, but I'm going to take a lot of this sauce out and set it aside and then use part of this sauce to make the ragu and then I'll have three sauces. I'll have the beef ragu, I'll have an Italian sausage ragu, and then I'll have an Italian sausage flavored marinara. And I'll use that for making spaghetti with Italian sausages on the side and the sauce will be flavored with Italian sausage. So I'm making actually three sauces here. So let me get my Italian sausages out, part of the sauce, and I'll finish up by making my Italian sausage ragu. I started my heat again. I put some water in this pan. I don't need fat in this pan because this sausage is going to give off some fat. So I'm going to take four of these sausages and remove the meat from the casing because I just want to cook the meat just like I would cook, just like I cook the ground beef. Okay, one more. Again, these sausages are about four ounces each, so each of these, all four of these, are going to give me one pound of sausage meat. And then I'm just going to cook those up, same as I did the ground beef. This is all cooked. I cooked this a little longer because I want, I don't know whether you can see it or not on the camera lens, there's a fennel seed right there on my spatula. That fennel seed um, comes from the sausage. There's fennel seed in there. That fennel is what's going to flavor my sauce. And so I'm not going to drain the fat off either because there isn't a lot of fat there. And the fennel flavoring will be in that oil. It's also going to be in the Italian sausage. It's going to be cooked into the um, the marinara sauce to make the ragu. I didn't put any nutmeg in this like I did the other sauce because this has the fennel in it. And again, the fennel is what's going to flavor this ragu. My last step with this sauce is to reintroduce my cooked Italian sausage meat. And that is really all that's involved to making an Italian sausage ragu. So there's two ragus, a, a, a ground beef ragu and an Italian sausage ragu. And then the last thing I've got to do is I've got to taste these. So I'm going to cook up some pasta and use one of these to go onto my cooked pasta. I'm ready to taste my ragu. I cooked up some elbow macaroni and I put in some of the beef ragu. When I was a child in New England, in Connecticut, growing up, we called this, I don't know why, American chop suey. I have no idea where the name came from. It's simply elbow macaroni with a beef ragu in it. I had a friend who grew up in Texas. His mom made a very similar dish. The only difference was she put in chopped bell peppers and they called it skeddy and beef. I'm sure this is eaten by families all over the United States, if not most of the world. I don't know what different names it's called, but I still think of this as American chop suey. So here's my plate of food. I'm dying to taste this. 
Oh. See, it's the it's the caramelized onion that gives it that nice, almost sweet flavor to the sauce. Mm. Oh, that brings back memories of childhood. So I'm going to go have my American chop suey. For a printable PDF copy of this recipe with step-by-step -step photographs, visit the White Trash Cooking website and look on the home page or in the recipe archive.